Hey, what's up? My name is Samuel Leeds. I am a property investor and I'm standing outside yet another finished property development. This is in South Birmingham and this was a joint venture agreement between myself and my good friend Saj Hussain. This was bought for £150,000. The renovation was £120,000. The current value now is in excess of £370,000. So this little flip has got £100,000 profit in it. It was a little two bed house, now it's a luxury four bed family home. Saj Hussain bought the property, I put all the money in, he's given me a fixed return of 14% and I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly what he's done inside and how he's managed the refurbishment project. So let's have a look around, let's find out. Here he is! It's good to see you, man. This guy, legend, nice to see you, it's been a while. Come on through. Oh man, this looks different. It's a little bit different, it's taken us longer. The pandemic has been painful. Really nice. So, uh, Fantastic. Yeah, it's all been stripped back to brick and pretty much started again. So apart from the, the four original walls, that's all that remains of the original this, house. This is fabulous. Honestly, I love the colours, the, the spotlights. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, fabulous. so this was the first reception room here. We had a lovely five place here which we ripped out. We've tripled the chimneys out just to try and give it a little bit more space. Yeah. It's not a huge house. And I think the creating that feeling of space is important. The colours we're just trying to keep fairly neutral, you know, apart from a couple of feature wallpapers. So Yeah. You've gone quite high end with this. Uh, yeah, I think because we want to achieve uh, the top price we possibly can for it, it's really just trying to make it as attractive as we can to make it look and feel like a brand new house, which yeah. it almost is apart from the original It is, original it's walls. a new build. Pretty it's, much. It's a, it's a new build, oh man. I can't, I don't want to look because it, <laughs> it, it will spoil it when you actually show it. But yeah, it was a bit of a so, jungle previously. So what's this? this uh, that's a, a heating uh, system, I think that one's, is it Nest? I think it's a Nest, Yeah. Uh, that one. So the staircase was here, that's been reconfigured a little bit. Basement we were originally not going to use, but now we've We've cleared it all out. It's it's dry, heating, lighting, everything down there. Okay. Plumbing, uh, as well. Now they say that the most important room in the house is the kitchen. Absolutely. So you've really gone over town on the kitchen by the well, looks of things. I think, I think we've created a, a nice space. Ah, the lights on. So uh, this, now is, this this is this, this was this ended this ended here. Uh, Did it not? Or somewhere about, around here. About here, I think. Yeah. Ended here. So yeah. you had to build this whole new extension. Yes. Did this? Did you need plan permission? Did you get permission to do that? Yeah. So, so what we did originally is we uh, we went down both routes simultaneously to save time. So we put planning application in, and we submitted the uh, permitted development drawings as well. Essentially saying, look, you know, if you can give us planning to do this, we're going to do this. If not, we're going to do this bit anyway. Yeah. Um, and they declined the planning. We could have actually probably gone back and got it, but we pushed ahead without and we went permitted development route. So the bit we didn't get was to build on top of this part here. Okay. That's the bit we didn't get. So there would have been another uh, room above here. Yeah. Um, but we've effectively built this extension and converted the loft space with the dormer. Okay. Well, it looks amazing. And I think as well, with the kitchen being one of the most important rooms in the house, the fact that you managed to get permitted development yes. to, to build this is a really, really good thing. For anyone who doesn't know that maybe listening, what is permitted development? Yeah, so, I mean? so permitted development essentially is uh, each property has certain rights. You're allowed to change its use, do certain work on it without submitting a full planning application. Yeah. So it's looking at what can we do via that route because you don't need any consent as such. You just need to know to this is what we're doing. Um, and also looking at planning, which is our more ambitious option. Uh, and so that way, what we've done is case of we've worked out the maximum we can do without actually needing any permission, and we went down that route. Yeah, which, which, was, your, which, which was your exit strategy anyway. Yeah, the we talked B. about this, and you said last year, you said, we're going to get planning permission, we're going to do this, this, and this, but if we don't, yeah. we're going to get permit development to yes. do what, what you've done. So, well, it looks amazing. How, how much did this kitchen cost? How much was that? Actually, you know, I don't know exactly how much we spent, but I can assure you it's nowhere near what you probably think it is. Well, it looks expensive. <laughs> so we're trying to just create a really nice finish. Uh, I mean, these kitchens are magnet kitchens. Um, okay. We, uh, there's like the gloss finish, two tones, darker and lighter, and then the, uh, the, the cooker, appliances, worktop sinks, we just source from various different suppliers that we use for our other, uh, for our other projects. Yeah. 
Well, I think it's important to make it uh, do a high-end finish, just because if you're selling it, which 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 you are, you want it to you want it to look like a, like yeah. a show home, don't you? And I think if we think about when we go to look at a property, even as investors, when we're buying, we we'll probably spend ten, maybe fifteen minutes in that house, and we make a decision of a hundred to three hundred thousand pounds. Yeah. And so uh, I think the the detail is important, so that people's eyes are drawn to things that are appealing, rather than things that might put them off. Yeah. Yeah, so true. This is a great kitchen. And I love the fact that you've just kept it so open, the light. I mean, it's a really yeah. gloomy day today, but still it feels light and airy. You, you, what you've done here is, 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 is fabulous. Yeah, when we, when we were here last, uh, when you were here last, uh, looking at the uh, property, it was quite a dark house. Yes. Um, and I think it was uh, understatement. <laughs> understatement. It was the middle of the summer last yes. year, July, I think, when, we, when, when, uh, when, when, when this happened. And it was dreadful. It, yes. was, it was shabby, it was dingy, it was cobwebs everywhere. It was just an absolute wreck. So it's trying to get as much natural lighting as we can, so yeah. the large windows, the skylights as yeah. well. Yeah, and, and the spotlights as well. So we, and the spotlights, really bright. go uh, over the top on the spotlights to, to yeah. really help with the uh, lighting to brighten it up. Yeah, that's fabulous. All right, well, lead the way, sir. So we've got a downstairs wet room here. Um, so essentially we've got a bathroom on each, each floor. Uh, effectively. Um, Very nice. So, how did you how did you choose all the different you know the designs, the colours, the patterns? Did you do it yourself? Or did you um, get an interior I, designer? I, I, no, no, we don't use an interior designer. Um, but what we because we've run lots of projects simultaneously. So, in fact, when I was doing this one, we were running uh, eleven in total houses. I was Crazy. Doing. Um, so we just take different ideas from different properties, what works well, taking advice like these tiles, we've not used them before, the first time we used them, yeah, now we use them in, I think, three, four of the houses we put them in as well. Yeah. Um, and it's just trying to pick out things we think will look nice. Uh, I guess if we went the interior design route, it would probably be even better. But then also more expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah. Right, well, I think you've done that. Oh, thanks. We're doing some new build houses at the moment where they will use interior design to stage it and yeah. uh, to, to finish it. What's, it. what's in here? Is this the basement? Oh, that's the basement down there, yeah. Is that? Is so that... We, can, we, can have a, we can have a look. Let me just put the light on. So, mind your head, it's not designed for tall people. How the family, by the way, Zed? Yeah, they're all good, thank you. Yes, all, all well and busy. I'm, I'm quite pleased you can stand up in here. Yeah, I can't just about. <laughs> no, yeah, so, so, so this was just unused space. Now, really, it's, it's a case of uh, it's just been, uh, it's been dried out. We've got the heating, we've got the electrics, yeah. um, and, you know, I've got plumbing here as well. Um, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's still a basement. We've got a little bit of natural light and ventilation, but there's always going to be probably a little bit of damp and moisture in something like this. Yeah. We could have gone the full route and tanked it out, which would have been expensive, not really added an enormous amount of value. This way, it's, you know, it's a hobby room, it's an office, utility room, whatever somebody wants to use it for. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a huge house, it's thinking about how can we give somebody a little bit of extra space. Yeah. It's really important what you just said as well about thinking, how much am I going to have to spend? And then what's the added value going to yes. be? And that's, I think, you need to always look at that. Every time you spend a pound, you really want to be adding three ideas. Like yeah, yeah. That's a great way to look at it because, you know, there's so many more things you can do, yeah. but they're not necessarily all going to add yeah. value. Maybe. And if, if it's your house and, and, and you realise this is not an investment, this is for me, yeah. then you can say, you know what, I want to do this to the basement, yeah. but it's not an investment, I just want it. But when it's an investment, yes. you need to be looking at the formulas all the time. We've just got planning permission to build our own house, actually, so we're, uh, we're going to start that. Congratulations! Just, uh, and uh, uh, the budget's already getting a little bit out of control on that one. Really. Yeah. It's all that personal thing about want this, want to create it like this. Uh, and that's your house. Yeah, you don't think about uh, what's it going to be worth at the end. You think about actually what, what is it you want yeah. as a home. Yeah. Where is that, by the way? Just near here, actually. It's not far Beautiful. at all. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Cool. Should we go upstairs? Yeah. He says as almost trips himself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did the exact same thing. The same step. <laughs> You've gone for quite luxury carpets. Yes. Which I think is really important because you can you can ruin a refurb with, with bad carpets. Definitely. You know, cheap brown carpet and it's like, yeah. no! I, I see people sometimes scrimping on these things and I think it's... Uh, uh, it has a negative impact. Yeah. When you're trying to create a premium product, I said people are going to be here only for a few minutes. So when they're walking on a carpet that feels luxurious, that's one less thing they're going to be thinking about. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So this was a room that was a complete disaster, if you remember previously. It was all this was the cobweb room. 
The cobweb rooms are actually the other one. But actually, there were cobwebs everywhere. <laughs> it was a cobweb house. So this is the one where these walls fall into bits because oh, the walls have been yes. leaking for many, many years yes. down here. So we've uh, kind of gutted it all out, redone it. We because we're redoing this uh, roof anyway. What we've done again, we've lifted the uh, the roof up, uh, the yeah. ceiling, to, uh, the ceiling to vault it to, to give it that more space, uh, feeling of space and more light as well. Yeah. So, so talk, talk to me about the about the about the cost of the of the development because I know that initially it was yes. a 120 120,000 pound which to be fair seemed quite a lot yeah. over at first but then when you find out what you're actually going to do and the fact that we're going to be building and extending um, did it did it come on budget did it we did go over a little bit so how we were on about 10 grand so 10, we spent 130 uh, okay. on the house so which That's is not bad yeah yeah so I'm still I'm still quite so happy with that so less than 10% yeah i mean what what was probably more painful at the time frame uh, because we we're running so many different projects at the same time and then yeah. we ran into lockdown and issues with materials trying to get them and um, and not all the tradespeople being available and all these things caused uh, quite a bit of a slowdown but I guess the advantage that we've had during that time is the price have been continuing to be yeah. rising so that, that's sort of my that I was going to ask about that so the how it was a one, 150 purchase price 120 as it happens 130 yeah. but I put in 120 um, for the for the refurb so all in, you're talking 270, 280. Yeah. Um, what, do, what do we think the value is now? Probably at least 100 grand more than that. At least 100 grand more. So 100,000 pounds. Probably quite a bit more. Yeah. Well, well it's, um, it's on the market now for what, around, around the 400 mark? Yeah, close that. So we're looking for offers around that sort of thing. Around about 400. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, I'm quite confident we'll get it. Have you had much interest? Because I know it's not been on the market long. Have you had much interest? Um, so initially we tested it at a slightly higher price. Yeah. Um, and we had some interest, but not enough. So now we've flipped it and gone uh, at a much lower figure, but offers over yeah. to get the interest in. And I'm, I'm quite sure we will get it shifted in a, in a few Great. weeks. Great. Awesome. And, and, and what caused the delay? You say it was, was it a combination of COVID, other projects? Yeah, I mean, because we're running so many different projects as well at the same time, yeah. that's been one of the uh, issues. Um, the, uh, the biggest problem we've had on most of the sites is trying to get materials. Yeah. There's been a lack of materials in space. So like, for example, you can't get plastic. You can't really progress with the project. They're just grind to a halt. Yeah. Uh, and then some- no, In the same way, my builders say, in the same way that we, uh, we normal people, save up toilet roll in they're not there. <laughs> they're storing up plaster yes. you know because it, it, it is it's running out and it is yes. slowing things down but it, you've done a fabulous finish and it, i don't think it's gone over crazy it was only last year when we started so it, yeah. it's got it's gone over a little bit but um you know these things happen in property so. yeah yeah i mean uh I say two things to learn about um about projects uh they take longer and cost more it, yeah often is the case so you need to build that in yeah yeah yeah, but this is part of it, and That's you know it. you're you're very experienced. So luckily, this pro this property there's enough profit in there, yeah. and that's I think that's the real key as well. If you've got a property whereby you've only got 20, 30 grand profit, yes. and then you go over, you're stuffed. But when yes. you've got a hundred thousand pounds more plus profit in the deal, you might go over ten thousand yeah. pounds, but it's not scuppered you. It's not scuppered you. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think for me the the key aspect is having deals that have significant profit in them. Yes, they take longer to find. There's not many of them around but actually that means that everybody makes money so yeah. you know on this project uh, we talked about previously that actually uh, you know all of your money's gone into it you've lent the money for the project uh, somebody else has sourced it and built him and managed it i've been here periodically just making sure ultimately i'm responsible for it but as long as i know there's enough profit in it it doesn't matter if things cost a little bit more it goes over a little bit it's still going to work for everybody that's involved. great so true so true all right let's see what's next cool Let's go on through. Fabulous. So this this room is the uh, the middle bedroom. We were in the rear bedroom just now. Good sizes. Yeah, I mean here, uh, if you remember, we had some um, 70s fitted uh, shelves and cupboards and yeah. wardrobes, uh, which we ripped out. We're taking the chimney breast out as well again, as we said, just to, just to make the house uh, and uh, the rooms more uh, feel more spacious mm -hmm. as well. So they're they're more usable, they're more more practical. When these houses were built, it was. It was built for a completely different area and people yeah. lived in a different way. So it's thinking about how can we make this comfortable, desirable for a family that want to live in it uh, yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. You know what as well, the two things that you can't change, you'll know this, size and location. Absolutely. So you chose a, a property in a prime location, big old property, and then what you've done is you've transformed it into something that's beautiful, that's modern, looks like a show home. And that's why you've added so much value. So. Yeah, really good. And I can remember it before, and it's a different house. <laughs> it a totally is. different house. This is the, the main bedroom at the front of the house. 
This one is the one I was walking into cobwebs last time. Oh, yeah. um, and here what we've done, we've got an ensuite uh, in this, uh, this room. So it's still a good size. Um, again, we've removed the, uh, the chimney. I can't remember where the chimney was on this one. I think it was on that side. So the chimney breast uh, has gone. So uh, again, nice and spacious. We've got two big windows. Um, it feels like a, a nice spacious room and someone like you quite tall, much taller than me, may not even realize actually we've dropped the ceilings. Uh, we've lowered them. And the reason we've lowered them because we wanted to create more head height uh, in the loft. Um, so that was going to be more spacious because if we can drop the ceilings a little bit, actually it means you can walk further in the uh, loft towards the eaves which actually makes quite a significant difference to, um, uh, to the loft. Mm, good job. And you've added quite a lot of ensuite. You've added a toilet yeah. downstairs. Yeah. And again, that's another thing about new homes. People in 2020, they want lots of bathrooms, lots of toilets. Yes. If you've got four or five yeah. people living in the house, you probably want at least three toilets. Yeah, as, uh, if you've got a four bedroom house, you know, it's gonna be uh, probably mom and dad, the kids. You've got to think about uh, how's it gonna work for everybody yeah. uh, today. And that's why um, I think emphasizing on how are people gonna use the house and how can you make it as desirable and as comfortable as possible. That's, what's, that's what was uh, is gonna sell it. Yeah, great job. What was the loft before? What was the it loft, like? Was loft it just, was just a loft. There was nothing there. It was, uh, a, very, it was a small loft because it, you've, you've added, yeah. you've added, you've added it um, was, There was actually uh, a, um, a cupboard here yeah. and that was it. So this has all been uh, built as new. In fact, the whole staircase in the house is, is new, but that's what we've created here. So, so this isn't really a refurb. This is definitely a proper renovation. <laughs> this is a development. So here we've got a, probably the biggest room in the house. Yeah. Nice and spacious. It's a good room. Um, so uh, the, the bit where you're standing now, that's a dormer at the rear. So the house literally would have probably, the loft would have ended about here. So that's stretched out. It means it just gives it a lot more space. Yeah. Um, we've got a bathroom on this floor as well. And the space behind it, rather than allow it to just go to waste, we just use it as storage. And by lowering the ceilings uh, in, the, in the rooms below, Actually, what it means is you can walk further this way, so it actually makes the room uh, makes the room a lot bigger. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because if the ceiling if the ceiling was a bit higher, you wouldn't be able. I wouldn't yes. be able to be standing here. Yeah. Yeah, great. I don't know if you remember the garden, Samuel. Probably can't see it so well here. Yeah, the, I remember uh, it. Yeah. Through the rain, it was a bit of a jungle. Yeah. So it looks a little bit different. It does. Uh, it looks it fabulous. Looks a bit different now, and uh, just again, uh, little things like. Uh, we're actually backing onto several different gardens. So that means there's actually lots of different um, uh, fence panels that were there. But although most of these weren't ours, we replaced them all anyway, just to make it look much more attractive. Yeah. Um, it's small you, cost. Yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? It's like, you, you could think, oh, I don't, that's not my fence to yes. fix. I'm not gonna fix it. But then actually, then you end up with a nasty looking fence yeah. on your property. So, so we've so. done a little bit of work in most of the neighbors' gardens as well, um, just to, to make uh, it work for us and it keeps the neighbors happy <laughs> what as well. Have you do, what have you done in the neighbors' gardens? And so we've got rid of uh, hedges, bushes, we've refitted the fences for them, we've cleared up a little bit of stuff on the side of theirs because we had a few, there were large trees on the side and although they weren't in our property, yeah. they were affecting the property. So negotiating the yeah. neighbors, getting them taken down. Some of them were paid for. It's funny because my mom used to always say to me when we were looking to move house, she'd say, if you want to know what the area is like, look at the neighbors' gardens. Yes. And if the neighbors' gardens are terrible, then that probably means you're not a great neighbor. So what you've yeah. done is you've been like, I'm going to fix up their gardens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so again, when someone's looking, they, yeah. it just looks nicer. It feels nice and attractive. All the neighbors are happy because you know, let's face it, you know, doing work like this is quite disruptive for the neighbors as well. Yeah. Uh, and the neighbor on this side has been great. We've done little bits of work for him as well. Good. Again, it just means that they're on side. Um, they're happy. Uh, it's cost us very little because we're here anyway. We've got tradespeople anyway. Whether it's a few extra fence panels or it's a lick of paint or something, it's of a negligible cost to us. Yeah. And it's great when you've got people on side as well, neighbors, the community with them on side. It makes a big difference. So. Absolutely. Yeah, good job there. Fantastic. So here we have the other bathroom on the uh, uh, on the top floor. This is essentially the main main bathroom, if you like, um, or the one with the bathtub. Um, and uh, again, it, we've kind of squeezed it into that space, although it doesn't feel like it's been squeezed no, in. No, it's actually a pretty big bath. Yeah. So yeah, you've done so well. And I think you've used the space that you've got really, really effectively. Yeah, fabulous job. Yeah, I think the- Very modern looking, wow. Thank you. I think spending uh, a lot of time at the beginning in terms of how the house is going to be laid out, exactly where everything's going to go. For example, 
pea-shaped bath there. It was an afterthought. It was all uh, uh, created in the initial plans. And although we spend a lot more time there, it just means then it's really about just managing yeah. the managing the uh, the works. Uh, and not having to worry about the detail and oh uh, as an afterthought maybe we should put this here we should put that there there's less of those things there's always going to be some little bits of detail that you'll find along the way maybe it might be better if we do it this way or we change that that you find as you're going through the project but the more you plan beforehand the easier it is yeah you know what i'm really impressed about as well the photos look incredible talk, talk to me about that because i know you have a thing about photos so tell me yeah, so these are lots of little things we learn over the years as we've been, as we've been doing this. Uh, is an agent will say, yeah, we'll take the photographs, we'll be professional photographs. They might be, or they may not be so great. So I don't take that chance. What I do is we have our professional property photographer. He takes all the photos and we send them to the agent to say, these are the ones you're gonna use. You'll never do a good of a job when it's not your property. Yes. So, you know, you're, I know what's gonna, if you're anything like me, Sad, your team, they'll, they'll be like on a ladder. <laughs> really far back trying to make the kitchen look as big as possible yeah. but uh, no, the pictures are fabulous on, online yeah. so a couple hundred quid or whatever it uh, was makes a huge difference yeah, in terms of it comes back down to that people are going to make decisions very quickly based on their feelings their emotion yeah and if they if the pictures look great if it feels great when they're coming they don't see anything that they need to change or things that don't look right, that all helps in terms of the buying process. This was before, it was just overgrown. Yeah. It was a jungle. It's quite a jungle here. Uh, and although it's a small garden, it's again just trying to make it as usable, as practical did as you, possible. What did you do, turf this? Yeah, so we've just turfed this here. Again, all fast, this blocked. everything's, everything's got to yeah. be quick. This was literally within a, 10 days, it was starting to, uh, to grow. So we've cut it, uh, I think, twice since it was uh, done. It looks like it's ready for another, another cut. And again, the outside. Just talk to me a little bit about what happened on the outside. Yeah, I mean, I guess that the rendering is probably uh, not quite as perfect as I would like it, but it's, it's good enough uh, for, for, for the job that we're doing. At the end of the day, it's an old house as well that we're modernizing. But it just, uh, it, it had cladding on before, which was really horrible. So all the cladding come off. We thought we might be able to restore the bricks, but that wasn't really gonna be viable. It looks good. It looks like a new build. And which, which is what you've gone yeah. for. The whole thing looks like a brand new property. If you, if you didn't know any better, you'd think you'd literally smash the whole thing down and build it again from scratch. Yeah. Most of your deals that you do, you, you always seem to do them in forms of joint ventures. Like, why is that? Uh, I guess when I started, from about around 15 years ago, I started to have any money and I just got really good at finding deals. But then I realized actually sourcing is not gonna pay me very well for the rest of my life. Then I just by accident started partnering with other people, using other people's money on deals and I thought this is a much better way to go and I've just continued doing that. So that, that's really how it, how it started. That's it was an accident. You know what, it's interesting that you said, so you started deal sourcing yes. and I always say that when you start, maybe you should, maybe you should start deal sourcing for free just to yeah. prove your credibility. Then start charging, then start charging more, then start joint venturing and you yes. just build it up. And I think one of the reasons I um, joint ventured with Sad is because he's got credibility, you know, we're good friends, we've been friends for, for we've known each other for years now. Quite a few years. And, um, if you're putting your money into someone's deal, make sure that not only is the deal good, but also, and I had a charge on this property, of course, but also make sure that the, the person's good. They know what they're doing. So, uh, you know, you've done a cracking, a cracking job. Oh, thank you very much, I really appreciate it. It's gone seamlessly working with you as well, so, you know, that's been great. Yeah, you know what, really you, when, when you told me about the deal, it was just immediate, wasn't it? Yeah, within a few days, we'd kind of, when I mentioned it, we'd met up, we had a chat, we looked at the property, and within days, we had it done, and we had it. We had it and that's what you have to do. You speed have to, is important. Speed is important. If a good deal comes along, you need to be able to see a good deal, you need to be able to make a decision. That's what uh, Saj did, that's what I did on this project, and, um, you know, it's been great seeing it again. I hope you guys enjoy it. This dude's amazing. Check him out. I'll leave a link in the description for Saj. Also, if you want to do development deals like this, Saj, what would be the top piece of advice you'd give to someone wanting to step out and do an, an investment project? I think like you've this? got to find an amazing deal. Yes. If you find really good deals, you don't have to worry about finding the money. The money will find you. Absolutely. I think that's key. And then having right people on board in terms of contractors um, and architects, people you're working with, to de-risk it as much as you possibly can. Yeah. You know what? If, if you've got good deals, Saj is so right. If you've got good deals, the money will come to you. So if you want to learn how to find good deals, you can do that by getting trained. And, and I'm going to leave again, I'm going to leave more videos where you can get trained on how to find good deals. If you've got money and you're looking to invest in deals, have a conversation. Find people that are doing deals, have a conversation. It's all about taking action. And that's the biggest thing. I'm going to shoot. Saj. Pleasure to see you. See you later. God bless you. Thank you Take so care. much. Peace out. Bye now. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. You can check out all of my videos 
honestly, get good at finding deals, the money will come to you, I promise you. Also, if you've got money, but you haven't got time, and you want to invest into someone else's deals, let's have a chat, and I look forward to helping you succeed in property. See you next time.